when you say high intensity, you don't mean a class or a run uh, where you're drenched in sweat and gasping for air at the end necessarily. Correct. Let's disambiguate high intensity from what most people think of high intensity, which is a really hard workout, a tough class where they had me moving the whole time, doing a circuit, et cetera. What does the appropriate high intensity workout look like? Okay. So uh, if I talk about true high intensity interval training, if you're a runner, it's going to the track and doing sets of 400 and 800. Okay, so 400 a lap. Yep. 800 two, two laps. laps. Right. Yeah. So you're looking at between a minute and 4 minutes of of hard work at 80% or more with variable recovery. So that's why I use a track as a as an example. So if you do one lap and you're like, "Oh, I'm going to walk half a lap and then do it again." That's adequate recovery. Pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. Right. But it's not like you're going to be there for 90 minutes doing as many 400s as you can. Because you have that variable recovery, it might take half an hour to 40 minutes max. And then you're gassed out. You can't do it anymore. If we're looking at a gym situation, I look, I, I like to look at something like every minute on the minute where you might be doing uh, 10 deadlifts at moderate intensity weight. and it 10 takes repetitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it takes you 50 seconds to complete that. And then you have 10 seconds to move to the next exercise that might be thrusters. So, you know, a squat, clean thruster. So it's a squat, pulling the weight up overhead. So you're doing maybe eight of those in that minute and you might have 10 second recovery. You go to the next exercise that might be um, kettlebell swings and you're doing explosive kettlebell swings and you'll finish, you know, 10 seconds to go. You go to the fourth exercise, I don't know, toes to bar or some other kind of V up, some other high intensity. And then you have one minute completely off. So you've had four minutes of really heavy work with maybe 10 seconds to move to the next exercise, one minute completely off. And then you repeat that three times. And this is high intensity interval training. This is not what you would consider resistance training for sake of building muscle or strength. Correct. This You're is using the these loads, these machines, the, the pike, you know, hang from the bar and bring your knees up or L sit or something as a tool to get the heart rate up continually. Yeah, yeah. Very different than resistance training the, mo the way most people think about it. Correct. So this is the cardiovascular high intensity interval training. And the subset of that is sprint interval training. And this is something that's really, really hard and people don't get it. I don't necessarily mean running. It can be whatever mode of activity, but it's 30 seconds or less as hard as you can go. So this is your nine or 10 on your rating and perceived exertion, 110%, it's max effort. On the rower, on the Airdyne bike, yeah. running Salt if bike, you like. Running, yeah, okay. any of those the things. The skier, the, yeah. yeah. Battle okay. ropes, mm -hmm. battle ropes are big. So 30 seconds all out, then rest, what, 10, 15 seconds, repeat? No, no. you want to, because now we're looking at that top end where we want uh, regeneration of your ATP, you know, all of that system and central nervous system recovery. So this is 30 seconds all out. It could be two or three minutes of recovery. Oh, nice. Because I'm not looking at Tabata where you're 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, because that's not the intensity we want. We want you to go all out and recover well enough to be able to go all, all out again. You're not leaving anything in the tank. So those are what I mean by high intensity interval training or, or when you're looking at polarizing your cardiovascular work, that's the top end. Those are the two examples of your top end. Mm -hmm. And then your recovery is that long, slow walking on another day where you're not going and doing a tempo run. You're not doing a 5K easy jog because that puts you in that moderate intensity. And if I heard you correctly earlier, you are suggesting most women do one or two days of high intensity interval training mm -hmm. plus three to four days of resistance training for sake of building strength and muscle, which looks very different. It's more warm up, do a couple work sets, you know, two to four work sets of, you know, an overhead press, two or four work sets of uh, maybe a barbell curl, two or four sets of some dips or whatever, whatever um, one's, you know, personal choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Um, very different, far and away different than what most people, men or women are doing out there, which is, um, a lot of Stairmaster treadmill jogging, mm -hmm. maybe some lifting for hypertrophy. Because I look at the general consensus of what's out there in the fitness world is all based on aesthetics. 
and body composition. And so people have this mentality of, I need to be hypertrophy to get swole and I need to do long, slow stuff on the cardio machine to lose body fat. But that isn't what we're after. We're after let's create really strong external stress to create adaptations, not only from a neural and a brain standpoint that's understanding it, but also feeding down to metabolic change. Because if you have a really significant high stress, we see epigenetic changes within the muscle that increase the amount of what we call the GLUT4 gates. So, you know, the proteins that open up that allow carbohydrate to come in without insulin. So we're expanding that acute um, glucose uptake through an epigenetic change. The other thing that it does is it causes a, an acute inflammatory response that your body learns to overcome. And it's really important for women to do that because as we start to lose estrogen, we lose a significant anti-inflammatory agent. So this is why we see that increase in the visceral fat, especially when we're hitting your, your mid forties onwards is because now you have this increase in free fatty acids and the inability for inflammation to come down. So the muscle cell is going, mm, I don't know what to do with this. So it gets circulated to the liver and the liver stores it as visceral fat. Whereas if you do that high intensity work, it creates that change within the muscle to understand, pull that in, let's use it. Let's also bring more carbohydrate in and more glucose in, use that, which helps use free fatty acids. And it also creates a significant anti-inflammatory response at the level of, of the mitochondria and within the cell itself, which is what estrogen used to do. So if we look at those external stresses, it's not about body comp and aesthetics per se, it's about the molecular changes that we want to invoke to get that body composition and the brain health that allow us to be 80 or 90 and independently living.